some magic name in college football, and the Sooners are rolling again under Barry Switzer, the winningest coach in the game today. Over the last month, the Oklahoma defense has been awesome, led by All-American linebacker Brian Bosworth, a throwback to Stone Age football, who plays this game with a seldom-seen violence. And defense has been the key to Colorado's amazing turnaround of 1986. anticipating this gigantic struggle here in showdown for first place in the big eight oklahoma versus colorado and of course you could have a better setting we're delighted to join us for this exciting game i'm jim Thackle with steve davis a big one we got today steve well there's no doubt about it any coach in college football wants to get his team in a position in the month of november where they're playing with momentum and confidence and going against uh, an opportunity to either win a conference championship or compete for the national championship and that's exactly Exactly what is at stake today. Well, ever since losing to Miami, Oklahoma's come back. They've looked like the national champions they are. Oklahoma's playing so dominant right now. They dominate in all the statistical categories. Oklahoma's playing extremely well together. They're a team with a destiny. They want to go back to the Orange Bowl. And I think that they're a football team right now that's playing as well as any team Barry Switzer's ever had. Colorado, of course, had an amazing turnaround and comeback after losing their first four games. Nobody thought they'd be anywhere near where they are today, but they've won five straight and tied for first place. Well, there's no doubt about Colorado. They are probably the most resilient football team right now in college football. And Bill McCartney's done a great job of getting his team to that position. I really feel like that Colorado's got a, an uphill battle. They realize it, and they've got to pull on all the resources to really make the game uh, uh, real competitive today. Well, with that, Steve, of course, both teams are set, both healthy, as they've been all year. What do you see as the keys? Well, Oklahoma right now, offensively, the, the real trigger man is Jamel Holloway. Jamel's playing outstanding football. He makes good decisions. He put pressures on defense. They've got a good offensive line that are playing very well together, and then a myriad of big play talent offensively. Defensively, it's Brian Bosworth, the key. The defense is playing statistically outstanding, better than any team Oklahoma's had. But I really believe that Oklahoma on both sides of the ball are getting the job done to the level that Barry Switzer wanted them to. Well, Steve, both teams are wishbone quarter, uh, teams. You are a wishbone quarterback, so there's going to be no big surprises there. Well, there's no doubt about it. For Colorado offensively, the difference has been Mark Hatcher, their quarterback. Missouri game, the fifth game of the season. Hatcher was in fear of losing his position, but he's become more competitive. He's made the right decisions. He's been the real key for Colorado's improvement and getting on the point of being 5-0. and Also, O.C. Oliver, the freshman running back, has made the difference. Historically, the wishbone early in its uh, life was dedicated to power and, and not a whole lot of speed, but now the trend is towards speed, and O.C. Oliver represents that opportunity for Colorado. But defensively, the key, I think, is in the middle of the ball, where Kirk Coke is, the 
uh, outstanding tackle. Uh, Kyle Rapold is also there. They really have the job of taking the Oklahoma quarterback and fullback out of the ball game. Well, of course, I think you have to say there's going to be a lot of pressure on those outside linebackers for Colorado. Oklahoma, if it has anything else, has tremendous speed in the backfield and great depth. They get to the corner quicker than any other team in America. Well, there's no doubt about it. Barry Switzer, all of his coaching career at Oklahoma, has always recruited the great speed backs. Colorado has an advantage in terms of they practice against the wishbone. They understand the mentality of the wishbone, and they're prepared to play against it. But I really think what's going to happen for Colorado today is, first of all, the quarterback fullback. If those three middle people, their defensive front, can control Oklahoma and force the wide plays, that's one thing. And then the other thing is have success early. Trick plays, whatever it takes to get the attention and the focus of the crowd in the ball game. And for Oklahoma, they've got to take all those factors away. All right, we're going to hear from both the head men, the head coaches of these two teams, of Oklahoma and Colorado, leading up to the kickoff of this most important game of the Big 8 season so far. Coming up in a moment. phases but they are a team that has improved I think uh, Oliver gives them a back that can make things happen I think their speed is similar to last year but they have a year uh, of understanding both as a coaching staff and as a team and execution of this offense and it's helped them this year I think this version of the wishbone is the most talented, most explosive wishbone to date. Certainly down through the years, Oklahoma and Alabama have had some great teams, but uh, of the ones that I've seen, this is uh, easily the most explosive. Uh, they have a tremendous offensive line. They get great players at skill positions. They're healthy for this game, and they have great depth. Coach, since 1973, have you had a football team that's played as well for Oklahoma as this team's playing for you right now? I think we're probably executing as well as we've ever have. We've probably got more team speed, overall team speed, than we've ever had at Oklahoma. And we've complemented our defense, but in fact, our offense has controlled the ball and scored so many points. We're a good defensive football team, but our offense has really complemented them, not putting them in any undue pressure at any time on the field with uh, unfair field position advantage. Uh, we're going to have to do the, almost everything right in order to stay in the game. Uh, if we can keep from turning the ball over, if we can make them go long distances to score, if our kicking game is dominant, uh, then we have a chance. And what a magnificent day here in the battle toward the Orange Bowl as Oklahoma, the defending national champions, rank fourth in the nation and tied for first place with the Colorado Buffaloes meet head-on to decide who's going to lead this conference heading into the final week of the season. And now we told you about the weather conditions, 57 degrees. A week ago, they're having a near blizzard here at Folsom Field, but it's brilliant sunshine overhead today, just a mild wind. And this stadium close to 53,000 and an overflow crowd is set to go. Oklahoma won the opening toss, deferred to the second half. Colorado then chose to receive, so Oklahoma will kick off. That's Todd Thompson, a sophomore from Sepulveda, Oklahoma, and back deep to receive for Colorado. M.J. Nelson is the man who's back on the end zone on the goal line, and he'll be trying to return this one. Sooners lead this one by overwhelming margin, as they do most teams, with the possible exception of Nebraska. They won nine in a row, including a shutout last year. And so here we're set to go. Number 91, Todd Thompson, to kick off for Oklahoma. And as you would act, might expect, we build up to the excitement here. So uh, Oklahoma will go to its bonded defensively. Very opening, Steve. And that'll be a test for the Colorado Buffalo. Both teams use the wishbone attack. Oklahoma lost only one time that to Miami in that early season game. deep in the end zone and the touchback will bring Colorado out to its own 20 yard line and now they'll start first and 10. Perhaps the key man in the wishbone attack for Colorado or 
for any wishbone as the quarterback, but it's certainly true here for the Buffaloes. Mark Hatcher, who is, uh, was a tailback here when he came here, and um, a different type of attack, adjusted over to become a wishbone quarterback. There's his uh, attempts in rushing and passing this year. He's been under fire a little bit this season, but he is held in there, and he'll run the wishbone attack as Colorado stops first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. We'll set the rest of the backfield for you in just a moment. The give is the speedster. Oliver cracks in for a short gain of a couple of yards, and Bosworth is in there for his first tackle of the day. A great All-American linebacker. Rest of the backfield with Hatcher. There's Weatherspoon, Oliver, and Michael Marcus making up the do, and the two receivers, John Embry, would be a great receiver where he's on a passing team. He's the tight end, and here's the offensive line anchored by Eric Coyle, an All-American candidate playing at center. Colorado second and eight from their own 22-yard line. pitch and Oliver wants to throw and he gets it off short incomplete trying to hit up the right side he wanted to hit his tight end John Ember and he's thrown a little bit short broken up by Ricky Dixon who was covering the Oklahoma defense outstanding Mike Mantle Richard Reed Dante Williams Steve Bryan and Troy Johnson across the front Brian Bosworth consensus All-American Paul Miliazzo his compliment and then an outstanding secondary a little slightly changed around this week as Vickers starts at strong safety moving Sonny Brown to the left cornerback's position they may be teeing off right here. They've got Colorado right where they like to have him. And Bosworth is the ringleader here for this defense. Let's see if they're coming, expecting the pass from Hatcher. Two wide receivers in. They've broken the bone. Hatcher sacked. Back at the 15-yard line. The man that got him was Troy Johnson. A fine junior defensive right in from Houston. Oklahoma was most concerned early in the ball game about Colorado feeling the pressure to have something big happen in the first series. And so they wanted to play field position and try to assault the Colorado's offense, and they were able to hold them on the first drive. Johnson, probably the best pass rusher. All-American punter, Ferry Helton, who could be a key in this game. His back left to kick it out of the hole. High snap, he's going to get it away. Beautiful kick. Boom, back. Here's Patrick Collins. Gets five. And it is fired in bad.
the Buffaloes. And they're going after Tops. Ooh, close. Beautiful putt, but hung high. Fair catch call for for Campbell. He takes it inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. And Colorado has stopped Oklahoma, something no other opponent was able to do in the opening drive in 1986. We'll be coming right back to Boulder. No score, and the Buffaloes have the ball.
but it's a punting game as Helton comes on the field. I think what's really important about this drive, though, is Oklahoma is going to lose on the field position battle. Well, Helton comes on. He's averaging 46 yards a punt. His net punting is 42.3, which is number one in the nation. So Colorado's got a great uh, kicking game. Patrick Collins, who usually is in their kick running back, is there. He hangs a high one, Helton. Did not be returned. The ball is going to hit down inside the 50. Texas Oklahoma bounce back up over the 20. That was a great break for Oklahoma. Well, you can have great talent, great speed, and uh, great players. It also helps to have a little luck every now and then. And Oklahoma gets a break here. Better field position they'll have when we come back at their own 23, first and 10. Reasons you've got a great defensive football team. Watch Oklahoma react to the play of Colorado on the third down play. Everyone makes the right turn, going for the ball, reading it, anticipating the leverage and the angle they've got to take to make the play. And there are five red and white jerseys around the ball. Lydell Cars and then pullback. They get straight ahead in here to Patrick Collins. Tries to hit on the dive play, comes over the 25 yard line. Stopped by David Tate. Bill McCarthy really felt like coming into the ball game that just like last week and Jim Kreiner at Iowa State against Nebraska, that they had to choreograph the victory, that Colorado had to come into the ball game and be very patient and just get little games and field position, big plays, and create an opportunity where Oklahoma's got to go long distances for scores. Second and seven. Holloway had Jackson. Here's Holloway on the key. Holloway first down and more. 40. Big game. Over the 50-yard line. Jamel Holloway. One of the things that makes Jamel Holloway such a great option quarterback is his decisiveness. He makes the right decision. He's always got his balance. He keeps his head moving. He knows where the, the people are coming in pursuit angles, and he's always going to the open area. He has a thick sense of where the angle and pursuit is coming for him on the option game, and he makes the right decision. 23-yard run. They break the ball. The wide receiver. Fullback has got it. Coming over here is Aldell uh, Carr. Breaks a tackle. Finishes off Lydell Carr that time. And the pickup is just a yard to the 31. And it'll be second down and nine for Oklahoma. Sooners scored 10 rushing touchdowns against Missouri last week. Big eight record. They scored 77 points. We've got a quick look there at Barry Switzer. 82% of the game. He's one of the years. Winning is the record in America today. We get a timeout here. 6.29 to go in the first quarter with no score from Boulder, Oklahoma against Colorado for first place in the Big 8. Barry Switzer's very first team, 1973, led by my sidekick Steve Davis here, was undefeated. They say this team may be as good or maybe better. Bill McCartney, who dished, uh, ditched his passing game a couple of years last year for the wishbone ball back home. Shows. It's perfectly executed. Oklahoma's got the scene, but watch what happens with Patrick Collins' self tackleization Apparently not injured. Collins just got off stride and lost his balance. So it's third and nine, Oklahoma, at the Colorado 31, and here's a big, big play for the Sooners. No score yet. Now Del Carr gets a crease, breaks a tackle, and he's hit down just short of the first down. About a yard more, he would have had a first down on the 23. Mickey Pruitt and Rodney Rogers teamed up to stop number 45, Lydell Carr. Like Weatherspoon, he's he got to do more than hit him. He's a tough customer to pull down. So it's fourth and one. Is Oklahoma going to go for it? Or will they try for a three here? Looks like they might go for the yard.
Rogers hit it for blockers. Marion Anderson there, and there, so is Tillman, double tight end for Oklahoma. Fourth and a yard, and it's a keep here by Jamel Holloway, and the up the counter quarterback play may have the first down. Rodney Rogers made the hit on the 22, but I think they made it. If they made it, they're lucky because it was a busted play. Jamel came to line of scrimmage, saw something he did not like, changed the play, and then went the wrong direction. Watch the replay. You can see it. Here he's changing the play right there. See, he's talking to linemen. Everybody's reacting. Now everybody goes to the other direction. Lydell Carr, I think the play obviously was to the right side, and Jamel went to the left side. They got, they did get the first and ten. They're lucky. So it's called a handoff to nobody. Well, they got the first down at the 21 of Colorado. Again, it is a blowback. Lydell Carr cracks his way to the 15-yard line. Stop by Deluzio. This is Oklahoma's bread and butter. They like to chew up yardage, keep that ball uh, running the clock, and just wear down the opponent. I think what both Oklahoma's offense and Colorado's offense have done, they've been able to take a lot of the turnover, the high risk factor out of the offense, which historically in the earlier years the wishbone it was known for and criticized for. Both teams have really controlled the turnover factor when they're on offense. Just a moment. Out to try the point. Tim Lasher, who's hit 129 consecutive points after touchdown. All-time Big Eight record. He is vying for a national record with Van Tiffin of Alabama, who's hit 130. One more. The way Oklahoma scores touchdowns, he might be able to catch and pass Tiffin. Who knows? That's a good consequence here. Here's Lasher to try for 130 in a row. And for him. And all probability right now is pulled even with Van Tippen of Alabama, who'll be playing late. Watch, Watch the offensive line block. They're blocking. That's the backside. The play's going away from them. Rapole is out of the play. Now, the quarterback, Holloway, has got the very man he sees, isolates the man on him. Watch him. Here's the whole play. Now, watch him find the end man line of scrimmage that has the quarterback. Bang. You, that's the first option. There it is. The pitch. Now, there's a good block there by Tillman. And he gets in the end zone. Patrick Collins, he has speed. The best overall back for Oklahoma. Patrick Collins just scored. Touchdown number seven this year. And we'll be coming back for the tip-off. Now with Oklahoma in the lead, seven to nothing. Todd Thompson now will kick off for Oklahoma. The Sooners, very impressive that time. It took only 10 plays to drive 77 yards, a little over four minutes, all on the ground, 17 yards by Collins. to the 38. 
Good stop by Richard Reed. One of the two Reeds, no relation, who do a lot of playing on the left side of the Oklahoma defense. Weatherspoon and Hatcher involved in a very controversial newspaper story here this week about being involved in drugs, and it's really left McCartney vivid, Steve. Well, there's no doubt about it. We'll talk about it after this play, but Coach McCartney's done the right thing in reacting to what happened. Second down play. Second man gets it. Oliver spins out to the 43. Stopped a couple of yards short of the first down, maybe a yard and a half. And Colorado sticks to the ground out of its wishbone attack. There's no doubt Bill McCartney, I think, made the right decisions. And anyone that knows McCartney knows that he's not going to tolerate drugs or drug users or abusers. And he'll do all that he can to punish those involved. And then he's not, you know, if he'd have been allowed to implement his program as he did in his first year, probably what happened would not have happened. Spoon. He needed just a yard and got it. First half for Colorado to 45. The story was the two players had admitted the use of drugs a long time ago in cooperation with the police who were trying to find a drug pusher. And the information was supposed to be confidential. But uh, the confidentiality was broken this past week, and McCartney has been furious about it. But really surprised you. Local press would do that to you. First and 10, Colorado. Hatcher pitches it now. Who is he belted hard out of bounds at the 47-yard line? What a hit by Derek White, a right corner linebacker. David Vickers has earned a starting spot this year in his junior year because of big plays like this. Oklahoma's defensive secondary has kind of turned him loose more so he can make big plays. Good execution. They get strung out. Brian's taking the wrong angle. He can't get there fast enough. Watch Vickers coming from his strong safety position. That's the kind of assaulting that both these defensive secondaries, both Colorado and Oklahoma, will have a tendency to do today because they are a big hit, conscious defensive secondary. Vickers was some quarterback in your hometown, Tulsa, Steve, when he was a high school star. Second down and eight now for Colorado, throwing 47. And here's Hatcher looking. Hatcher sacked, hit and taken down around the 44-yard line. And a good rush put him up the inside by Richard Reed, 255-pound senior tackle from Fort Worth. People. Steve Bryant, his older brothers, Ricky Bryant, playing with the Atlanta Falcons, Dante Williams and Richard Reed, really are playing well together. As I said earlier, they don't have all the talent maybe that we've had historically, or Oklahoma's had historically there, but this time they get the job done and force the ability of the quarterback to have to take the ball down and not throw it. I said we, I played at Oklahoma. So. Uh, we all forgive you for that, Steve. We know that you're taking a very unbiased view, though, of reporting this game and doing a great job. So far. Miranda and Carl, two wide receivers in there. Here goes Oliver for a block from wide receiver not going to get it stop short of the 50 on the 49 and it's fourth down and punting time again for the buffaloes with oklahoma in the lead seven nothing and coming down to the final 30 seconds of the first quarter goal. there's no doubt what oliver gives colorado is that speed dimension that really makes a difference they feel like in colorado they've got the speed on the team that's going to make the difference in colorado in future wishbone years that speed explosive ability that is typical of the great wishbone teams Coming back here in safety with Rodney Anderson for Oklahoma. And Helton Spot, he really hit that with a vengeance. That's going to carry way beyond and out of the end zone. And Helton said, enough of this. No more bad bounces for me today. I'll give Oklahoma the ball on the 20. And that's where they'll have it after that 51-yard boot when we come back with Oklahoma on top. Seven, zip. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines, serving Big 8 country with convenient flights to the east and west. Eastern, the leader Oklahoma has a 7 
nothing lead on a drive that came in the later stages of the first quarter. And we'll be right back after these words from our local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Absolute perfect day for football. Temperature in the high 70s. Not much wind. No sellout capacity crowd here at Folsom Field. And they're fighting for first place in the big game. Well, they're going to be seven, I think. Right now, Oklahoma apparently has broken the bone for this coming play. Holloway will have only two running backs. Earl Johnson and Anthony Stafford behind him. And two wide receivers, Derek Shepard and Paul Cavanis. First and ten. Stafford, a speedy guy, coming back to his left. A little bit of a counter play. Comes over the 35 and is smacked down by Kyle Rappold. The uh, outspoken and popular fun guy. Nose tackle right there he is for Colorado. They call him the trash compactor. He's got a line for any situation. He said that he, he, not only, he doesn't want to see any women until he's 30 years old. He fell in love once in high school. She broke his heart and that's the only injury he's ever had. Seventh for Oklahoma. Holloway pitches the ball out to Stafford. Stafford, who was he wrapped up hard on the 35 by David Tate, a junior cornerback from Denver, Colorado, number 23. Great job by Colorado. You want to do this, create situations where the quarterback has to get off his path. Did you see that little juke step by Holloway? He gets confused and has to get off his path, and he can't assault the end man on the line of scrimmage and make the option happen. So Colorado did the job inside. Then they were able to use their pursuit and stretch the play out, so they cut Oklahoma off and they had no game. Nickelback is in for Colorado to the linebacker. It's third down and eight, looking for the pass. Now they pitch it back outside here to Perry. Perry to the corner over the 40, and he tries to get the first down, and that last effort might have gotten it. It's going to be very close. Rappold and Rodgers on the stop. There's no such thing as a passing situation for Oklahoma. Is really doing a good job. Look at Rapole take the fullback. He's doing a job right now on Travis Simpson, the center, and they stretch it out. Look at all the pursuit of the black jerseys. That's how you stop the option play. Create problems for the quarterback fullback and then pursue like you, you, you're in real trouble and get outside and try to use your speed to cut Oklahoma off. Just short of the first down. And Todd Thompson sends a punt for Oklahoma. Jeff Campbell waiting for Colorado. Again, a close one, a low driving kick, and Campbell can't get to it. It takes a nice bounce for Colorado. Out of bounds on the 28-yard, 23-yard line. So Colorado prepares to go back to the offense, trailing by touchdown early in quarter number two here from Folsom Field in Boulder. And we'll be right back with more action in this showdown for the Big Eight. Bill McCartney making a significant change. Mark Walters has come in quarterback, replacing Mark Hatcher. Hatcher remains on the side. Oklahoma defense sees this wishbone every day in practice, just like the Colorado 
defense does. So well, they, there's no new wrinkles. Well, they fit in spring practice a lot. I think the, the thing is that the advantage for Oklahoma is that when they practice against themselves, Oklahoma's defense sees a much faster wishbone offense. Colorado has the speed in O.C. Oliver and their quarterback, but they don't have the total speed that Oklahoma does. So Oklahoma can react to a little bit slower, not quite as efficient to a wishbone that's a little bit more conservative because they haven't been in it that long in a few years. Second down and 12 for Colorado. Now it's a play action pick again over the middle and it's incomplete. Trying to hit uh, to Cameron Jones out of the backfield. And boy, uh, Walters paid the price then. He was blindsided right after he released that pass. Iliazzo, number 42 on the coverage. Won the Don Key Award. Named for an outstanding uh, player for Oklahoma. And his career cut a little bit short. Sam Smith now is coming to the backfield for Colorado, replacing Cameron Jones. Quarterback remains Mark Walters, number eight, who has replaced Mark Hatcher here in the second quarter. So McCartney didn't wait long to make a decision. Now they come out in the high formation. continues his impressive stats here for Colorado in the punting. Last week, the players of the week in the Big 8 Conference, Ken Kalen of uh, Nebraska was outstanding. It was a career high for him as they beat Iowa State in a key ball game last week that looked uh, pretty treacherous in the first half. And then Darren Chubak last week against Kansas, the Colorado outside linebacker played outstanding four and assisted tackles, two interceptions, and gave Colorado a chance to be 5-0 and and be here against Oklahoma. Last week's Big 8 players of the week, Ken Kalen and Darren Schubert. Now the uh, players, both teams being waved off to the sidelines here by the officials. Now what's this about, Steve? Now oranges are being thrown on the field, and I don't have to tell you the significance of that, but the officials have told both squads to go back to the sidelines and clear the field. Now here will come the announcement. See what we hear. Well, they're trying to keep the field clear here for the players, which is what they should do. And the referee, John Laurie, wasted no time at all. And cleaning up that situation. There's the team working here with John Laurie today. Signed by the Big 8 for this very crucial Big 8 game. Oklahoma leads it 7 0. We have 10.42 to go in the first half. The unfortunate thing is the ball being placed at about the 17 yard line is right in front of the Colorado student section. And they have been here since early this morning. And this stadium is one of the few in the Big 8 Conference, only one, where beer is sold on campus right here for the game. <laughs> to Spencer Tillman, a slashing runner. Drives up over the 20-yard line, halted around the 21 or 22. It was made by Eric McCarty, inside linebacker. This Colorado defense is really playing well, and this is the best time of the year to play well in November, and when you have a chance to go to the Orange Bowl. They react, they play together well, they complement each other, and they react. Three black jerseys around Spencer Tillman. Two wide receivers. Keith Jackson split out here on the left side. Bottom of your screen, you can't see him from tight end. And now here's the keeper, Holloway. Holloway turns the corner for a first down and more. Over the 30, dropped at the 34. Jamel Holloway does his magic again. Stopped by John Nairn in the secondary. You want to see 
something that Steve Davis never did when he played at Oklahoma. Watch. Jamel Holloway on the option play comes right down the line of scrimmage. He gets into the secondary. It was designed to get Jamel on the run. Now watch him. Bang, bang, bang. I couldn't do that in a million years. I can only dream about it. No, but what you did do was over 4,000 yards total yardage. No Holloway nor any other Oklahoma quarterback has ever done that. I wanted to make the guy miss me, though. That's fullback car. Hammers and Tom Reinhardt stops him. Short game. A couple. Out to the 37-yard line. There's Tom Reinhardt. He has really been the surprise of this Colorado defensive front. He was an unsu uh, unsuspected uh, contribution to the team this year. He really has played well. He's gaining more experience. He's been more really the intense player of that group and has made a difference for them. He has been a special surprise for Colorado. McCartney says he has that Reinhardt heart. Referring, of course, to his brother Ed. Second down play. Carr's got it. Pull back. Slams over the 40. Dropped on the 42 by Kurt Koch, who's developed into a great defensive tackle.
station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Stopping Oklahoma. They had to go only one play at two yards to get their second touchdown after the fumble by Weatherspoon. But the man responsible, really, for Oklahoma is Todd Thompson, who punted the ball 57 yards dead at the Colorado one-yard line. That's where Oklahoma was able to get it. Now Thompson is out there to kick off for Oklahoma. Number 91. What a big play that punt was. And how important is the kicking game? You thought Colorado might have an edge so far. Oklahoma's had the edge of kicking. A sailing kick. And it'll be taken by Pontip. Tries to come back up the middle and gets it to the 25. And Colorado will have to go back to work. And they say the wishbone is not a catch-up formation. Well, that's Colorado's trouble right now. Let's see the replay again on the fumble. Now watch the quarterback and fullback exchange. Let's see what happens. Weatherspoon really cuts it off too short. He really, I think it was Weatherspoon's fault. I don't think it was the quarterback's fault. He's cutting it off and jamming the quarterback's hands back, and that's where the fumble occurred. A poor exchange. Inexperienced, maybe. Well, it's brought Mark Hatcher back in at quarterback for Colorado. And now Weatherspoon gets it this time with a fury. Drives it out over the 30-yard line for a five-yard pickup. Stopped by Brian Bosworth. The catalyst of the Oklahoma defense, number 44, setting a new Oklahoma record today with his 34th consecutive start. Remember, he's just a junior, but no one expects him to come back next year. 4-5 speed, 450-pound bench press, 3.4 GPA or great point average. Two wide receivers, Weatherspoon right again, fighting for yardage out to 34, driving right in the teeth of Oklahoma's defense, Dante Jones, the linebacker. And on that stop for the Sooners, and they spot it on the 34 to be third down and two for Colorado. Troy Wolf, a backup tight end, was in to bring the play, and Colorado will go with two tight ends. Weatherspoon, Oliver, and Marcus are behind Marquette. Brian knows he's up in the Rocky Mountains, so he's worried. Cloggers. <laughs> Here's the key pass. Hatcher's got the first down. I think he's got a first down. His motion got him up to the 36-yard line. Bosworth then crunched him and drove him backwards. But the forward motion is what counts. He had to get to the 36, and he got it there. They're going to measure, but from here it looks like he easily got the first down. It doesn't matter what kind of shoes Brian Bosworth. Look at his reaction ability. He runs 4-5. Great reaction. Instinctive player. Knows where the play is going. Has that feel. He can run lateral. And then on top of that, he is mean. He goes head hunting and he finds all heads, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he, oh, he will find a lot of heads. First down for Colorado, though. so far there have been three quarterbacks in this game and all three from California. First downs, not that much difference. You know, you take the cheap touchdown away from Oklahoma, Colorado really has the game or had the game in 7 nothing with the time running out in the first and second quarter where they wanted it. Make the weather spoon and give to Oliver. Second man through doesn't get much. Bosworth led that charge again. Ricky Dixon to make the stop. Bosworth has uh, won the Butkus Awards as sophomore, and uh, no doubt he's going to win it again this year. It'd be a big upset if he didn't win it the second time. He's got to be the best linebacker since Butkus, but you don't like to compare things, Steve. But uh, what do you think? Well, he's got such speed, and I think the game is different than when Butkus played. But he is a physical linebacker, a very intelligent linebacker. He's one of the best that's ever played the game. There's no doubt about it. Second and seven, while the Spurs runs into a stone wall. And he's stacked up for a gain of just a yard. Richard Reed, a very physical defensive left tackle, first man to get him. Reed, one of the 23 players named for the all big Eight academic team. And I'll tell you all about all those at halftime. He's taking this. Third down and six coming up here for Colorado against the Oklahoma defense. That's Steve Bryan, Ricky Bryan's younger brother. I say, coaches say that he is a Bryant personality because he plays hard, he works hard, he gets
gets after you, he will not quit. They didn't. I mean, they had to pull him off the field. I mean, he is a competitor in every sense, and he's from Tater Hill, Oklahoma. Did you know that, Jim Thacker? No, I didn't know that, but I love his hometown, Broken Arrow. It's always been one of my favorite towns. Well, he's not from Broken Arrow. You know, he's, he's actually from Tater Hill, which is a suburb of Broken Arrow. <laughs>
keeps. Holloway turns the corner, and he's brought down to 45 after a nifty game. About 15 yards on that run. Life, Ray Pole, and Rodney Rogers went out to finally catch up with the elusive Jamel Holloway. Jamel really has a sense of what his limitations are as a quarterback in the wishbone offense. He also has a tremendous amount of confidence, and his team around him does, and that's the difference. We'll probably see Eric Mitchell today. Both quarterbacks are outstanding talents, but it's the Holloway confidence and magic about him when he's on the field that separates the two players. Rush for 610 yards coming in this game, seven touchdowns. Now he has a third down and 16. Here comes Holloway. Holloway through two defenders, and he's nailed before he can get the first down. You're only by Mickey Foote. He does get it across the 50, and Oklahoma ate up some good yardage after that long clipping uh, penalty. But now they'll have to give it back to Colorado with about a minute to go in the first half. The Buffalo will get it. Thompson, the last time he was in here, punted it dead on the one-yard line, and it set up Oklahoma's second touchdown. Jeff Campbell's waiting with the sun in his eyes here. And Thompson looking at a 10-man rush coming at him from Colorado. Buffalo's have been close a couple of times. kick this time it takes a nice bounce for Thompson and gets inside the 15. Colorado will have it at their 14, 86 yards away and only 37 seconds remaining in the first half. When we come back to wrap it up in the first uh, two periods, Oklahoma leading it 14-0. Marcus has been lost for the game for Colorado. They're starting right half back. Shoulder separation. He's been replaced by Cameron Jones. O.C. Oliver remains in left half. Hatcher is back in a quarterback. Time running out here in the first half. Weatherspoon and a counter fullback running back to his left. A short gain out to the 18-yard line. Troy Johnson stopped him for Oklahoma. Clock's running now with 25 seconds to go in the half. Oklahoma will go in with a 14-0 lead, it appears, and sort of a gift touchdown on their second one when it was fumbled by Colorado at the one-yard line. They might have time for one more play here. Let's see. Colorado's no hurry to get this snap underway. They might just let time run out, and they will. Colorado's content to go to the dressing room down 14 points to Oklahoma, but they were back deep in their own territory. Any little likelihood of doing anything. And so the Sooners still hoping for a second national championship the showdown with Nebraska coming. We're able to get the defense and hold Colorado off the first half. Well, I think that Oklahoma has got to feel pretty lucky to be 14 to nothing because they really got a cheap touchdown and Colorado has played well enough and I think Bill McCartney's got enough good things that happened to him in the first half to build on for a second half. The emotion is still there. I think Colorado's got a lot of momentum and that's going to be a factor in the second half. And that's the story of the first half. Oklahoma, for the first time uh, this year, was stopped from getting into scoring position on their opening drive, but they did later score two touchdowns. They lead 14-0, and we'll be right back after these words from our local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Fairly even first half, fairly hard fought, with the exception of the gift touchdown Oklahoma received, recovering the fumble at the one-yard line. But you got to thank Thompson's sum superb punt that went down at the one-yard line to set that up. The Sooners did drive for one legitimate score, and they kept Colorado out of the end zone to lead 14-0 at halftime. Oklahoma the favorite, leading in this game. That's still got a long way to go. Now, as we start our halftime show here from Folsom Field, let's first have this message from these two fine universities, Colorado at Boulder, Oklahoma at Norman. at uh, Folsom Field, we're kind of separate, uh, celebrating academic day here because this is the 1986 academic All-Big A team. One thing I want to note here, Steve uh, Davis, is that Nebraska and Oklahoma, over the years, the two dominant football teams, the Big A, also dominate this All-Academic team. they got nine players apiece. Well, it's a great compliment to both the programs to increase the intensity regarding academics and, and playing football. Both teams are outstanding on the field, but they've also been well known for many years as being outstanding talents in the classroom, and it's a compliment to both those programs, as it is to all the Big Eight member schools. All right, of course, you see the familiar name of Brian Bosworth, great All-American and Dick Buckus Award winner for Oklahoma. To the right of their great point averages, all of them are 3.0 except for three. So that's a great testimony to academic standards in the Big Eight Conference. And of course, another one here today, Barry Helton, 
the Colorado kicker having a excellent first half, averaging 46 yards a punt. Without about it. Let's take a look at the highlights of the first half of play now. 14-0, Oklahoma in the lead. Sooners, of course, earned their first touchdown. Colorado kind of gave them one gift wrap as Christmas came early on the second one. No doubt about it. Patrick Collins is the option play executed perfectly by Jamel Holloway. Patrick gets a good block outside by Keith Jackson, and then Patrick Collins able to use his speed. Another good block to hold up that secondary back of Colorado, and Oklahoma goes ahead 7-0. Next play was set up by a sensational punt. So Hilton's not only the great punter here, so's Todd Thompson. Watch this one go dead at the one. So many times in the big ball games, it's defense and kicking game. And here, he did what he was coached to do, and yet the ball was a dead spiral. It landed right there, and Oklahoma got great field position, setting up another play. This one right here. Well, uh, this one that caught Mark Walters. Now, let me make a point here, Steve, because there's some going to question Bill McCarty for having Walters in the play for this uh, in the game for this play. Young freshman quarterback backed up to the own one yard line. But you hit it on the head. It wasn't so much Walters' fault. No, I think it was Weatherspoon's fault. He cuts it off. Walters is going down the line. It's an option play with I probably on the base side trying to give the fullback the ball. And he just cut him off. He was trying to cut back, trying to take advantage of Oklahoma's defensive speed. And it cut the ball away from the quarterback, and they fumbled. And, of course, the fumble recovered by Oklahoma. And the next play, Lydell Card goes over to the top. Well, it's a cheap touchdown for Oklahoma, and I know they're counting their blessings right now. And Colorado's defense is saying, hey, listen, offense, help us out a little bit. And with that touchdown, Oklahoma goes ahead 14-0. Any more thoughts on the first half? Well, I think that Colorado really had all the right things going for them. I think they had the momentum and the emotion those parts but they've got to get a big play offensively they've got to do something they're doing the job to keep Oklahoma out of the end zone and they're causing them to go long distances but they've not been able to create the real offensive punch that they need in the ball game so I would see trick play something to get some fire offensively and then defensively it, you know they've only given up one sustained drive to Oklahoma they've kept them you know in between the 20s and that's that's success when you're playing Oklahoma. You know, actually, Colorado's success has come from the bread and butter stuff. They tried a lot of the trick stuff, and very little of it's worked, as it did against the Nebraska. Well, there's no doubt about it. It makes it important for Colorado, I think, is to be able in that defensive front, and they did it a lot in the first half, is to keep confusing Jamel Holloway, causing him to get out of tempo, and I think we'll see a different ball game in the second half. Oklahoma needs to take them away from the ball game right now, but Colorado, they've got things, other things on their mind. There's no doubt. All right. Well, coming back with the All-State statistics on the first half of this game being led by Oklahoma by 14 nothing. Those stats coming up after this. Are your car insurance bill swallowing a little too much of your budget? There is something you can do about it. Leave it to the good hands people. Come into Allstate and compare. I'll be in menswear. We'll do everything we can to save you some money. There you are, sir. Nice shirt. Well, thanks. Looks like I get to keep it. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Well, out on the field, the uh, Colorado Buffaloes set to return here along with Ralphie, too. And here are the first half statistics brought to you by Allstate Insurance Company. You see, first half's pretty even, but after that, Oklahoma dominant. Oklahoma in the rushing game, 161 yards. No passing for either team, which is typical of Wishbone teams. I think Oklahoma's about 105th in passing. Colorado's 103rd out of 105 teams. Total yards reflected. Passing 0-4. Nobody's completed anything. Then turnovers. That's the crucial issue, and I promise you, the Colorado of turning the ball over on their own one-yard line, you've got a different ball game if it's 7-0, but 14-0. And then Colorado, another stat that's important is they've been able to possess the ball keep it that's another point that bill mccartney said if we're going to win and choreograph a victory we've got to control the football they did in the first half well let's look at some other scores around the country today there's a very big big game in the big 10 ohio state had a first showdown with michigan illinois the upset iowa last week now they're leading indiana and michigan headed for ohio state of course leading with some there's texas over tcu at the half 24 nothing purdue and iowa tie well, purdue giving iowa a battle that's really a surprise in the Big Ten. We'll see how that one develops. Next weekend is the last to catch a full complement of Big 8 Conference football this season. In addition to our Raycom Sports telecast of the Kansas-Missouri game from Columbia, Missouri, Iowa State is at Oklahoma State, Colorado is at Kansas State, and it's Oklahoma at Nebraska. And now coming up here in Boulder, Boulder 
Wilson Field on a beautiful day. Second half of Oklahoma leading 14 nothing. We'll be right back. Oklahoma had the second half option of the Sooners with a 14 nothing lead elected to take the win and Colorado will uh, receive just as they did to start the ball game. So Steve why would Oklahoma take uh, the win and not take the ball? I don't think Oklahoma wants to get into the situation in the fourth quarter where the game is, is, is tight and very competitive. They want to take all the muscle and do all they can in the third quarter and try to take Colorado out of the ball game this particular 15 minute uh, period. So they're going to their strength of defense. This one should go beyond the end zone and for a touchback. It's fielded there by Keith Von Templin, but it's uh, beyond the end line, automatic touchback. And so Colorado will start in the second half. And let's see who's coming on the quarterback. Mark Walters the first half. It's going to be Mark Hatcher coming out at uh, quarterback, I believe. Yep, he's getting a final word over there from the offensive coordinator Jerry DiNardo and Bill McCartney. And here comes Hatcher. Michael Marquez, who started the game at right halfback, is out with a shoulder separation. Cameron Jones is playing his spot. And O.C. Oliver is the left half. second half and here's the key and there is Brian Bosworth so welcome to the big eight Mr. Hatcher Brian Bosworth just smothered Hatcher coming hard from his linebacking post on the strong side Oklahoma's down people do a great job of protecting Brian Bosworth look at him see he just all by himself nobody's there he's totally protected he's able to go make the play and there he is right in front of you and I tell you what that could be your worst nightmare to see that unencumbered Brian Bosworth coming right at you of only two, though, in the second down of 12. Now, Oliver with his speed, trying to get to the foot. Bosworth to the other side. Bosworth with two straight tackles, throwing runners for losses both times. <laughs> and here come the oranges out of the Colorado section, and that'll be able to bring on another timeout. If you don't know Brian Bosworth, all the oranges do is just ag him on. He's going to play harder and be more intense. Watch him break down again. Nobody around Brian Bosworth. He's all by himself. A lot of people can make those kind of plays if you don't get someone around his feet and try to take him out of the play. So again, uh, play is delayed here as they get the oranges off the field. Uh, now we're going to be set to play. What this could develop into, if it uh, gets into where it's delaying the game, the officials do have the authority to charge Colorado with a timeout. But there's been no warning. Limited speed, but unlimited heart. And watch him make the tackle. Daddy, this is not fun. Good effort. Number five, 15. Watch him come into the picture. Ooh. Patrick Collins trying to break down. And then there's Steve Beck making the play. 51-yard punt by Helton. So he continues his great average. Black 
Derek Shirley defensive wave for Palo Alto. Here's Oklahoma's answer to the refrigerator. Watch Greg Johnson. He's 315 pounds, number 75. In the offensive line, when you're the wishbone, you don't have to be quite the talent. You just try to wall off the inside people. That time, Greg didn't do his job and isolate because there's too much pursuit coming on Jamel Holloway. You've got to isolate the inside people and let the outside people quarterback operate on the perimeter. Second and 12.
Oklahoma defense, which has given up only three points in the last five games. There's a quarterback draw. Here's Hatcher breaking through there for a first down and gets it out of a dangerous spot. Hatcher on a fake runs a quarterback counter. And he pops through. Hatcher used this play against Oklahoma State quite successfully because Oklahoma State has a quick reacting defense. Look at Oklahoma's defense reacting. Look at Bosworth breaking to the outside. Now he's got to go to the outside, back inside. Good effort, and then Hector has the kind of speed to put him in the secondary, so that's a big play for Colorado. Trying to intimidate Oklahoma by taking advantage of their quickness. Now the pitch, pitch it deep to Oliver with his speed, and he will not get around the corner. Oliver ahead as he turns up field for just a short game by Bosworth again, who's playing another stout game for this Oklahoma defense. Oklahoma, this amazing factor, but Oklahoma comes very close to have scoring a point for every yard the opponents have gained. They've given up 440 yards rushing, and they've scored 418 points. Well, they're over that now with 14 today. 432 points. From the 22-yard line, it'll be second down and eight for Colorado. Hatcher in the backfield with Weatherspoon. And now M.J. Nelson is in there. Cameron Jones, they have taken Oliver out for the moment. Fullback Weatherspoon hammers his way up to a 25. Weatherspoon had quite a statistic, Steve, on how many yards he'd gained after being hit. And that's been a challenge to this Oklahoma defense, and they've been pretty effective in cutting him down. I'll tell you, he's 250-plus pounds in the fullback position. He's a great impact player for Colorado and so important to their success offensively. Colorado's not had a lot of success outside running the ball because of Oklahoma's speed. Their seemingly success has been on counter-type stuff, reverse-type plays, taking advantage of Oklahoma's quickness and trying to execute against them. Third down, and here's Hatcher now. Hatcher behind the line, breaks through. Hatcher's got the first down. Over the 35, out on the 37. Penalty flag down. Hold it. Penalty flag is down. Sonny Brown made the stop for Oklahoma. Hatcher had an apparent first down, but maybe not. Because the flag was thrown back at the line of play, and the signal's holding against Colorado. Well, that takes away from first down for the Buffaloes, and a push it back deep in the hole. They make something happen in the passing game. Watch Oklahoma fight. And then he dodges bullets, and then he gets into the secondary. And somewhere right, well, they're, well, they're holding, hole right there. Holding Keith Jackson. Looks like, or not Dante Jackson, Williams. Dante Williams, right. Well, the penalty takes it back to the 15. So now Oklahoma, if they can uh, keep Colorado here, making a 15-yard play, would come up with good field position. That's the strategy the Sooners came into the second half with choosing to kick off to take the win, and they've kept the Buffaloes bottled up. It's Hatcher's job to try to get them out of there. Jamel Holloway made some remarks about uh, Hatcher before the game, but Hatcher kind of shrugged him off. Play action, the fake again. Hatcher sacked. Taken down hard by Troy Johnson. Boy, what a pass rusher he is. He's now had two sacks in this game. Seven for the year. Colorado trying to get a big play in the passing game, trying to kind of take the heat off of them. There's Troy Johnson coming right in. No one picked up Troy Johnson. Fast, quick, intelligent player. There's Lance Carl. He's open. He's just not getting enough time to throw the ball. Al Helton back in his end zone. The pressure's really on him. And he hits a big one. Fair catch called for by Collins inside the 40 at the 39, and there Oklahoma will have excellent field position to start their next uh, series of downs midway in the third quarter, and the Sooners still holding that two-touchdown lead. It's Oklahoma 14 and Colorado nothing, and we'll be right back after these words from our local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. I don't think it reflects Colorado's ineptness on offense. I think it shows the greatness, possibly, of Oklahoma. They're the number one rushing defense, number one in scoring, number one in total defense. And those possessions today at Colorado illustrate the point. Colback has got it. Uh, Lydell Carr hits up over the 40. Cole Hayes is back in there. Remember, he was shaking up. Makes the stop on the car. 
Well, you can tell Barry Switzer's intent on uh, this ball game. Normally, he will sh split up the quarterbacking duties with Jamel Holloway and Eric Mitchell. So far, we have not seen Mitchell today, and it's been the more experienced Holloway all the way so far. Two wide receivers now as they split Keith Jackson away at uh, tight end on the right. This is Stafford. It's a little bit of a crack and drives it out over the 45. This is the type of uh, yardage that Oklahoma's trying to gain. They just want to chop it off five yards in the whack. That's how the wishbone operates. Uh, you get them in trouble when you get them third and long. That seldom happens. That's the team of Oklahoma's caliber. And in the story here today, they were able to do it for one scoring drive. And they've kept Colorado out of bottle back here in the third period. Here's a big play for the Colorado defense. Third and three. slides off Holloway, and then it's just Holloway's athletic ability, his quickness, and his strength to get to the first and ten, but Colorado's there. They're doing a great job on defense. They've just not been able to stop it when they make first contact uh, with the player. They haven't wrapped him up every time. Keep a Holloway. Holloway hit. Breaks another tackle. Boy, that kid is strong, and it finally takes Rodney Rogers coming to the ball because his pitch man is covered and he knows he's got to fight for yards he gets around the man that had his responsibility and just fights for additional yardage a very confident cool operator at the wishbone and steve he's destined someday to pass up your 2,000 yard rushing over 1500 yards here already mary remington that time on the stop
three touch uh, seven touchdowns rushing and thrown for three. So Mitchell's got a lot of credentials. They're really working over Holloway out there. So let's hope he's really not hurt too seriously. Barry Switzer, you know, out the field, the trainers. Tillman for the first down. Dives inside the 19-yard line. Looks like he's got a first down by a full half yard. As Colorado plays it tough defensively, but just not tough enough for Bob Alaput. Spencer Tillman really has the best jumping ability of any of the Oklahoma backs, and this time Leon Perry will put a block and allow Spencer to jump. Just trying to get the first and ten, get out there with the football. Steve, that's what I call an athlete giving up his body. Well, this, is, you know, this is not pillow fighting. It's a physical sport, and you've got to be able to move the chains and whatever it takes to get it done. I think that's the main part of, you know, when you look and talk to any big eight football player that plays in the conference and plays a very competitive league, you, you make whatever sacrifices are necessary. Coming to measure, but I think this is merely academic here. Uh, they clearly picked up the first down by almost a yard.
Jones was playing Iowa State, had Iowa State beaten, and they sacked the quarterback. And on the play, there was a dead ball foul. They penalized Iowa State, come back to a long pass, and then won the ball game. It can't happen. Oklahoma back now at the 29, second and uh, 16. They broke in the ball, there goes Colorado rushing outside. That was Kurt Coke. Now, did somebody move for Oklahoma or not? Looked like Coke just charged in there. I think Greg Johnson. He moved? 75. That's the case. The penalty's going to be on Oklahoma. That uh, looks like that's it. Penalty flag against Oklahoma's Barry Switzer now from coming on the field. And that will be a long one for unsportsmanlike conduct on Switzer. And of course, these fans here in Boulder love that, Steve. Switzer hit with a long penalty. This is going to be about 20 yards in penalties. There's five yards for the uh, for the legal procedure. Movement in line. Now we're going to get a 15-yarder here against Switzer. And this takes it almost back to midfield. Well, the Colorado fans getting something to cheer. Well, Switzer's adamant over there. Wanting to know what happened. He was trying to find out something, perhaps. Switzer's a battler, isn't he? He's going to have his word. Barry Switzer. He needs 16 straight wins in order to pull even with Bud Wilkinson when Wilkinson was 150 and 25. Right now, Switzer's 134 and 25. Actually, a game ahead of him, but he's got a long winning streak yet to come if he's going to catch Bud at that particular stage. Back to the 49. Now it's second down and from here to Denver to go for a first down. You think it's past the situation, but Oklahoma likes to run. And now Jamel Holloway wants a timeout. Now this is firing up the Oklahoma crowd. If that'll be a fact or not for the fourth period, you never know. Teams can get inspired, and when they've been winning, sometimes the fans can inspire them to play in heroic style. Well, let's keep a note of this. Uh, Colorado players are pounding themselves on the back. Let's take a break here and come right back. Oklahoma ball, and they lead it 14 to nothing. Bill McCartney uh, could be second guessed on having a young quarterback in the key, key time. Nope. But I don't think so. Barry Switzer just been hit with a 15 yard penalty, and he's got this Colorado crowd on its feet. through that Slidell car and it takes a game tackle to stop him at the 40-yard line. Nine-yard pick up Mickey Pruitt, number 19, the first to hit him. Slidell Carr, who's been alternating with Earl Johnson at uh, fullback in this game for the workhorse for the Oklahoma backfield this year, a bruising type runner. Spencer Tillman. The music team's with him is out there now. Stafford, Patrick Collins, the other half. Third and 26. Al Holloway says he cannot hear. So the officials give him an official timeout here to quiet down the crowd. If the officials warn the crowd, then it can result in a timeout charge to Colorado. It's important for Jamel Holloway and any quarterback in this situation, if at all costs that you feel that you can communicate, then try to run the play and take the emotion out of the crowd. Every time you go back to the huddle asking to the official that I need, I cannot hear, you bring the crowd even more because they know that they're having an effect on you. So if you can run the play, run the play and take the emotion away from Colorado fans that are right now are very much into the ball game. Well, Holloway's going down the line telling his players what he wants. Won't be switching plays here. Holloway on the key. Holloway cuts and he's hit. Taken down by Tom Dunn and by Don Deluzio. Dunn playing for an injured Tom Reinhardt, who's out of the lineup at the moment for Colorado. 
You cannot say enough against about Colorado in the sense of their middle people, Coke, Rapold, and Hayes, Remington, Deluzio, the two linebackers. Watch them react. You're not getting the backside block if you're Oklahoma. That frees Remington able to go and pursue. Look, all the pursuit, the black jerseys around Oklahoma, forcing them to the sidelines, stringing it out, and pursuit and speed being the difference. Todd Thompson's been one of the heroes today for Oklahoma. His punting has been instrumental in setting up a score and keeping Colorado pinned in a hole. Jeff Campbell waiting for Colorado. Thompson going with the win here late in the third period. High punt. This one will carry to the end zone and in there for a touchdown. And that one really bounced backwards. That guy's got a talent for having punts hit and stop or bound back to him. So now Colorado takes possession of the ball. Eight seconds to go in the third period. Still no score. The trailing Oklahoma, 14 to zip. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines, serving Big A country with convenient flights to the east and west. Eastern, a leader in service to all the Americas. McCartney again comes in with Mark Walters, his freshman quarterback, replacing Mark Hatcher. disaster. Walters was in there for that critical fumble by Colorado late in the first half that gave Oklahoma an inexpensive touchdown at the one-yard line. And there he fumbles the snap again to end the third period. So the fourth quarter is coming up from Boulder, Colorado. Oklahoma's national rank defense continues to shut out the Buffaloes. And we'll be right back after these words from our local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Thank you. 
very difficult to run against this defensive football team. You've got to be able to sometimes somehow counter their quickness and the reaction speed that they display so well in the field. And that's the problem for any offense. First down, Colorado at their 44. The front line has played most of this ballgame. Uh, Oklahoma's used uh, substitutions here and there, but for the most part, Ryan Johnson, Reed, Mantle, or Darrell Reed have been playing up front. With Williams in the middle. Bosworth played the whole way, and Miliazzo most of the way. Rollback has got it again, and Weatherspoon just charges on up to the 49-yard line, and Bosworth makes the stop on him right there. Both wearing number 44. And that guy, Bosworth, a variety of the spice of life, and he's got to be having a ball. Everyone thinks that he'll be going to the NFL next year. He's a redshirt junior. Second down and six. Weatherspoon didn't have a good handle on the ball, but does get it uh, just over the 50 into Oklahoma territory. And it's going to bring a tough play for a Colorado. Four, third down and about uh, four. Richard Reed makes the stop. Reed about a mile knee spray. Watch Oklahoma. Again, it, this is the top defense in the country. Watch how many white jerseys swarm to the ball. Everyone's movement with the target on the ball carrier. That's what makes for great defense. You see secondary backs, and they keep pounding until they hear that whistle blow. And they're playing so well together and so, with so much confidence, and that's why they're the best defense in the country. Third down and four. Colorado strong side to the right. Fumble. And who's got it? I think Colorado covered it, but they're still fighting for it. Now Colorado had the ball on the whistle. So that prevents any chance to pick up a first down. They pushed it back into Colorado territory, and Barry Hulton comes back out on the field. Number 96, Richard Reed, came very close to getting in there. There's Everyone's getting ready to recognize the fumble. There's the scramble. Oklahoma's got two or three players around Colorado also. But he was able to evidently pull it back in and keep the ball and keep possession. Oklahoma does not have its returners out there. They're expecting help. And it's a, oh, Helton is caught and dropped back behind the line. Had no chance to pump. That was not a fake. He was trying to kick just a great rush by Steve Bryan up on the inside. And the Oklahoma team with another big play will take over here in Colorado territory. Steve Bryan, number 86. Great effort player. Let's see if anyone touches him. I don't think so. He, they did a little stunt, and he was able to change Helton's tempo up, and he just grabbed hold and would not let go. Great play by Steve Bryan from Tater Hill. <laughs> there you go. First down Oklahoma at the 38-yard line of Colorado. Here's another opportunity for the Sooners here to add to the lead. The quarterback is Jamel Holloway. Fullback Blydell Carr breaks through. Got some room to the 25 for a first down. and backs at you in angry waves as Oklahoma team does. And look at what they've got. Holloway, very close to 100 yards. Cars could reach 100 today. They had both quarterbacks ran 100 last week against Missouri. Car again. Car this time runs right in the arms of Oklahoma defender and he is taken back hard. Tom Reinhardt. defense they really dominated this game excuse me well they have but i also want to compliment colorado's defense because i think they've done as good a job as anyone of being able to really cause oklahoma to stay pretty much inside and with holloway they've been able to do a great job on the wide plays holloway has been the damage for colorado but i think colorado has done a great job of preparing for oklahoma's speed and the speed's not been the problem but holloway inside the fullback Watch, there's Earl Johnson. Look
looking to make a block. Breaks in Colorado. This time did not have the number of bodies out on the outside that they have earlier in previous type plays. And Holloway puts them in position to put another uh, touchdown in the end zone. 114 yards rushing today for Jamel Holloway. First and goal, Oklahoma, the Colorado three. should beat Oklahoma next week. Uh, if Oklahoma continues to lead and win this game, then a Nebraska win next week would make it a three-way tie, and the Orange Bowl would select from the three. If Oklahoma wins today and next Saturday and uh, Lincoln, then the Sooners will be headed for Miami. High kick coming up on Tiplett at the five. Watch him break to the outside. Oklahoma, there's a seam created, a crease, and he's able to break into the second, break deep into the field. No one's there, no wall, just kind of impromptu and found the open area. Quarterback is Mark Hatcher as Oklahoma comes back to the attack. Keep Hatcher tries to run that little counter. Oklahoma this time not fooled at all. Richard Reed was waiting for him.
coaches in describing saying he just he plays with tremendous effort. 86. He's going to be right out. See Weatherspoon break down. There's there he is right there. He's got tackle and he breaks down on the quarterback and comes back inside. He was playing off the lineman, the line, just playing with the lineman until he saw the quarterback break inside and then he broke down and made the tackle. Jones has replaced Miliazzo, but uh, Ryan Bosworth is still in there. Play action fake and another sack here on Hatcher as Oklahoma keeps up tremendous pressure. And that was Bosworth who got through the sacking. I look at Bosworth waving to the crowd. Also gave a salute down there to the Sooner fans. Ryan Bosworth plays with tremendous intensity and emotion. He is an emotional spearhead. Even when he falls, he's around the ball. And he knows when he makes big plays and a part of big plays. And this team plays with a lot of motion because Brian Bosworth sets the tone of the defense. All right, Helton's average about 46 yards. He gets on the bat. Off the side of his foot, Helton, an uncharacteristic bad punt, will give Oklahoma excellent field position here with seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. Now, the Sooners will like nothing better than just run out the clock from here with their powerful wishbone attack. We'll see how all that comes about when we come back. There's timeout with a score. Oklahoma 21 and Colorado nothing and time running out on the Buffaloes. Back now at uh, Boulder, Colorado. We have an unconfirmed report on the score of the Big Ten. We'll get to it in a moment. Oklahoma takes over here. Pretty good field position after the poor punt by Helton. And the give is to Collins. Collins squirts through there over the 45 dropped on the 47-yard line by Solomon Millicott's and Cole Hayes. Collins hasn't been heard of that much today, although he did have a touchdown, uh, first touchdown of the game, on uh, a very beautiful run in the first half. Patrick really is the epitome of the wishbone halfback. Hands, intelligence, he's a blocker. You know, one thing about the wishbone on both sides for Colorado and Oklahoma, you have to be unselfish as a halfback. So you're going to share the responsibility of carrying the football, and you're going to share the responsibility of blocking the receivers. Oklahoma still runs it for a first down. Fullback gets up the middle. Eric McCarty and uh, Kyle Rappel are the two players that time that hit the stop on Earl Johnson. First down. Michigan, we understand, has come from behind after Minnesota has pulled an upset. They have beaten Michigan 20-17, to 17, knocking the Wolverines out of the undefeated ranks.
Mike Speed. Collins finally get him on the sidelines at the 20-yard line. David Tate overtaking Collins, who's explosive when he comes out of that wishbone backfield. Now the first down for Oklahoma. The perfect ratio. You want to create ratios, three on two or two on one. And Patrick Collins gets a great block from Carl Cabanis, number 83, and freezing right there. Watch Cabanis. sees bending him off, keeping him away. That's Wilcox, 29. He still makes the play, but he allowed Collins to make five, six, seven additional yards. Stafford and Collins. No, it's uh, Tillman and Collins running back. And here's Holloway keeping and heading downfield close to the 10-yard line. Stopped by Ryan Hart and the neighborhood of the 10. When you're a wishbone quarterback and you're running lateral so much, you know that you're going to create running lanes and you've got to have a sixth sense of where the people are going to be coming. Here, Holloway knows, does he go outside? No, he's going to break down. He's going to make that big man miss him and cut up field on a 90-degree angle and get into the secondary. Well, this is a fast game. This game is less than two and a half hours old, and we have just four minutes and 20 seconds to go in the contest. So early, the speed kills. Great defense. Superb punting today from Thompson. And they got a couple of breaks. Now, Colorado would have been to, needed to do all those things, plus get all the breaks in the game, most the expert figured, in order to make a close contest. It did not go that way, and so Oklahoma is very much in command here. Although the Buffaloes have played a very courageous game. Their defense has been uh, hammered time and again. For the most part, it's been Oklahoma's front line that stayed in there. Spencer Tillman is getting up slowly. There he is, number 20. Has a touchdown to his credit. Tillman is good as any of there are when he is healthy. Doesn't have the big stats that he did have. Uh, Mike Van Oakham was running the I formation, and he was a freshman getting 1,000 yards his first year. But in the wishbone, he's a very unselfish player. Doesn't seem to matter to him. He is a great competitor, leader, intelligent, articulate, all the right things, and certainly proud of being a
exactly unexpected. Oklahoma, 28, Colorado nothing, and the score counts tells you the story of the emotions on the field. Colorado will get the ball. Colorado's gotten off only two passes today, I think, both those and four, all those incomplete. So it's not been a completed pass in the game. I wonder if that might be a record. Oklahoma hasn't thrown one, which is going to be a mark for a long standing. Nobody has completed one. Haven't heard of that in a while. Now, down at the other end of the field, someone uh, seems to be injured over there. There's a big public. I don't think the officials see it. Now, finally, referee John Laurie spotted uh, what's going on. Here it is. Cheerleaders are out on the field. I don't know whether this got a prank or what. No, no, no. Someone got beamed by an orange. Game. He got him prepared. No doubt about it. Defensively, I think they came in with a very sound plan. Oklahoma didn't have a whole lot of big plays today. That's one thing they've been noted for all season. And they made them go long distances for touchdowns. And yet, they were just not able offensively to put it in the end zone. Well, he or even threaten really get it anywhere close to the end zone. Exactly. Not even close for a field goal. He can call Bo Schembechler tonight, his old boss, and they can commiserate a little bit. Schembechler, who was... Coach of Michigan with McCartney as an assistant there for seven years and became one of his coordinators. And this is going to be victory number 135 for Mary Switzer against only 25 losses. That's an amazing record. Not since Bud Wilkinson coached the same Oklahoma. Anybody put something like that together? Frank Leahy might have been in that category at one time. But that's an unbelievable mark. Switzer has a good down there at Oklahoma since 1973, which was your freshman year, Steve. Uh, my sophomore year. Sophomore I, was, year. I was Oklahoma's, I was Barry's first quarterback. And you know the thing about Barry, he may be nationally misunderstood by so many people that look at the Oklahoma football program. Barry is a fierce competitor. He create he's a vision creator. He can motivate you. He can create visions of what it will be like coming into an environment like Boulder, Colorado today. And he's a great communicator to young 18, 19, 20 year old kids. Like Steve Bryan and some of the other players that have been here in the program for, for several years play above their ability. I was an average player surrounded by a few great ones, and Barry Switzer made me a better player, and he does that almost every year. Well, you, you're being a little modest, Steve, but that's besides No, I'm point. being truthful. I, I'm being truthful. I was average, but I tell you what, he can he can pull it out of you and make you play beyond your ability and above, beyond your talent. Well, they've only twice in history as a team won national championships back to back. 1956 under uh, Wilkinson, and 1975 under uh, Switzer. And now they got a chance to do it again this year, and Switzer could become the first coach ever to do it twice. There's the cheerleader having to be taken from the field here in Colorado. It really looks serious. I hope to, and pray it isn't. But that's what resulted here from. Uh, just coming on the field. Fans don't mean anything uh, vicious about it, but that's the type Well, if you throw an orange now, Jim, you mean something. I mean, that's, you know. Well, you, they're trying to hit the field, and they missed the field. Well, no, I don't it. think so. I, you know, I don't think it's fun just throwing it at the field. You're throwing it at the target. The cheerleader was trying to pick them up, and somebody beamed him. A Colorado student beamed their own cheerleader. That's the tragedy of it. They shouldn't have allowed, and I'm not knocking the Colorado officials, but there were people selling, as I said, oranges for a dollar a piece outside the stadium. Well, let's hope this is just a precautionary thing, but it certainly is a scary scene here. This young cheerleader had to be carried from the field. Three minutes and 44 seconds from the end of this game, and it's brought kind of a hush over this crowd, which was roaring back in the first half, but it's had little to cheer about here in the second half. Now, Colorado breaks the ball again. Hatcher remains at quarterback. Hatcher straight back to Russia. Hatcher over the middle. I don't think you can 
say enough about what Colorado has done to be 0-4 in the early part of the season and come back and win five consecutive Big 8 Conference games and be in a position to compete to go to the Orange Bowl. That's to their credit. They've been resilient as a football team. Here comes Oliver turning the corner for a first down. Up close to the 30. Bosworth now is out of the Oklahoma lineup for the first time this afternoon. Evan Gatewood, a senior from Dallas, uh, who's uh, already in graduate school and law school. Outstanding students come in to replace him. A fine linebacker. So Bosworth retired, but he played down to inside the final three minutes. They take Embry out at tight end, and Colorado now is coming in with two tight ends, Randall and Carl, and Buffalo's going to have to put the ball up here, trying to salvage some kind of score. They got a long way to go. Hatcher, Hatcher throws a delayed screen, and Oliver drops it. A quick screen to Oliver. He had a blocker, Darren Muhlenberg, out in front of him, and he couldn't hold it. There's uh, Bosworth along the sidelines. Football, a violent game, and when Bosworth plays, it becomes a little more violent. And he's made this Oklahoma team one of the great defensive teams in recent history. Going to be a favorite to win the, uh, you know, if a defensive lineman or a linebacker could ever won the Heisman Trophy, he would have been a great candidate for me. Second down and 10. Hatcher goes back to the option. Hatcher keeps. He's got good speed. Cuts it upfield and has a first down to come over the 40 yard line. Fumbles and Oklahoma's got it. Another turnover by Colorado. And Oklahoma has the football at the 40. Well, it's a tough break for Mark Hatcher and the Colorado team. But that's uh, the way the game's played. Number 42 is Paul Miliazzo. He plays the opposite side linebacker from uh, Bosworth. And a great one is on right. Uh, Hatcher's not getting up either. Good execution by Mark Hatcher. Counter option play. Getting on the corner. Turns it inside. Uses it. He's got good speed. He's developing that sixth sense of knowing where the angles are. The ball pops loose. A good tackle. Let's see what happens where the ball comes free. I asked to fall before he's, he hits he's the He's falling ground. right there. The ball's there, free there. Good tackle there. I don't know who made the, who was that? Who made the stick. Uh, Miliazzo got the ball. I couldn't get the tackler. Now Hatcher's up. Back to the live action. Hatcher will walk off, and I suspect we'll see Mark Walters again. Two minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the game. Oklahoma 28 nothing. Looked like Kevin and Thompson might have been the young man that uh, made the tackle. Turnover today by Colorado. Oklahoma has played uh, without turnover. Or back in the freewheeling days of the 70s, that would have made headlines. No turnover by Oklahoma. Here's Mitchell now in a quarterback. Mitchell can't get to the corner. Run down by Eric McCarty. Used to, Steve, I know, maybe not when you play, but later under Switzer, he taught this quarterback to carry the ball in one hand, which gave him increased quickness to get to the corner. Did you play that one? Oh, uh, sure.
Sandler, 48. Did not break the long play. Barry Remington saw the bat for Colorado. Another great game for Remington. But the clock now has moved inside the minute, and Colorado calls timeout. They want to get their uh, team on the field and see what they can do about trying to get a score here before it's all over. Colorado has not been uh, shut out this year. Oklahoma has uh, shut out a lot of people. They've given up only three points in the last four games. There's Parham, the tight end who had replaced Keith Jackson running that tight end reverse. This is a play that Jackson didn't invent, but he has almost perfected it this year for Oklahoma. And I think a lot of that, not, Jackson got great talent, but the Oklahoma system helps make that play go, too. Well, you have to concentrate so often on the speed of the outside play that they're able to counteract it. You, generally, you've got to pursue and try to get outside, and then what Oklahoma does is the reverse play that has been very effective, as you said, all this year. When you think Bosworth would be nominated again for Defensive Player of the Week in the Big Eight, he's been nominated by five or six times this year. There's Jamel Holloway, who ran for over 100 yards in this game, and one of the stars for Oklahoma. Another one is on the field right now to kick Todd Thompson, who's had a fine day punting, and he's held his own in his match against uh, Barry Helton. As a matter of fact, after Helton's poor punt, they might be very, very even. One averaging 43 and the other one averaging 40. So that's a very, very close day for Thompson. Thompson will kick this ball from his own territory, somewhere around the 42-yard line. Single safety back for Campbell. Colorado will try to block this punt. They came very close a couple of times in the first half. point output was 13 points against, uh, or 10 points rather, against Ohio State. They lost that game 13 to 10. Here they come. And Thompson gets it away in the nick of time. Backing up Campbell's going to let it hit, and this time it takes a Colorado bounce into the end zone. That goes for the touchback. So maybe in the face of the rush, came along a lot better than the coaching staff here at Colorado thought he would. He figured maybe he would come in and play some defensive back, but uh, he's developed very, very quickly. Came out of the same high school as uh, Jamel. No, competed. He, yeah, that's right. In the same town, Carson, California. Matter of fact, I think his high school team beat Jamel. Yeah, sure some did. kind of a playoff. Banning versus uh, Carson. Play action again, but they're not fooling off. Strictly on the ground today, not a single pass attempt. And hitting up the fullback was Rodney Anderson. That's his first rush today. He's a sophomore from Dickinson, Texas, stopped by Brad Robinson. It's a young Colorado team. They're going to move up uh, a little bit more. We have 
Impressive victory for Oklahoma. Another victory, and they're head for their showdown with Nebraska. And down on the field is Coach Barry Switzer and his great linebacker, Brian Bosworth. How do you feel, Barry? I feel great. Uh, played good. Our defense played exceptional. I thought we would. I thought we controlled the ball and defensively. And uh, our, we won the kicking game. That's what I was really worried about. Our guy did a great job of punting the football today. And, of course, our defense never really was threatened. It's been that way all year. Just people don't have them driven the ball on us. Coach, it seemed like you just had such confidence that they could not score against you. Well, I think the defense has exuded that all year long. Uh, we believe in shutouts. We try to get them, and their offense is really complimenting them. Jamal Holloway is an awesome little football player. Golly, he's a great little player. He had a super football game today. Coach, why don't you give the headshot to right. Brian? We'll let right. you go in. I'm gone. Are you going to put a helmet on? <laughs> hey, Brian, do you feel like you need a helmet with all the oranges coming down? It's helmet. It's. Uh, I need a helmet. I need. I need some guns. <laughs> I need a barricade, I need some slaves, I don't know, I need something. Brian, it seemed like the crowd was trying to intimidate you today. Of course, you get that almost everywhere you go. Unfortunately, I do. But, but again, you know, you, you got to play with 11 players. One player doesn't doesn't win a ball game. You know, we got uh, offense and defense, and uh, I think everybody did a superb job today. Coach, Brian, uh, it seems like the defense is playing with such confidence. You just don't seem to ever really be fearful that they're going to get in the end zone against you. Well, you know, we understand the bone, and we know how it works. They didn't run the bone the way we thought they would. We thought they'd run a few more options, than they actually did. They tried to power the football against us, which is it's effective to, to grind out some clock time, but, I mean, you're not going to get very many yards. You're not going to score very very many points against our defense like that. Well, Brian, do you have any thoughts about uh, Nebraska next week? Well, I, you know, I've seen Nebraska. It's all, you know, it comes back. We put nature back in its proper course by putting Nebraska and Oklahoma as, you know, uh, birth to the orange ball. You know, we, one thing we're looking for right now is is uh, get home, celebrate a little bit for the Big A championship we just won, and then we're going to uh, get ready for Nebraska. It'll be a showdown, I guarantee you. Brian, put your helmet back on and get in the dressing room. Thanks, Bye. Steve. Thank you, Brian. Great game. Had a great game for the Oklahoma defense as they defeat Colorado here today. Another shutout, their fourth and five games, by a score of 28 to nothing over the Buffaloes, who'd made that inspiring recovery from an 0-4 start to win five straight games, but not quite enough to take on one of the nation's very top-ranked teams. And with Michigan's loss today, Oklahoma could climb up again into the national rankings. We'll see about that. The president of Raycom Sports is Rick Ray. The executive vice president is D. Ray. The executive producer, Don McGuire. The coordinating producer of Big A Football is Mike Clapp. And today's game is directed by Kent Samuel. Technical director, Chip Siegel. Associate producer, Ted Garcia. And a host of others who help bring you the excitement of this very crucial game. But uh, Colorado, of course, was never in it. Oklahoma was on it. Very powerful performance defensively and offensively and play the flawless game to win it 28 nothing and head on to Nebraska for the showdown for the Orange Bowl. The Big 8 season comes to a close with Raycom next Saturday with a matchup featuring the oldest rivalry in the league. Kansas Jayhawks and the Tigers of Missouri meet for the 29th time since 1891 at Coral Field in Columbia. So join us next Saturday. This is Jim Packer now for Steve Davis saying so long from Boulder, Colorado. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports.